In this presentation, we're going to talk about another control that's a pressure control. Now, pressure controls take and open and close a switch based on the pressure that it senses within a refrigeration line. Okay, they can be a safety control, but they can also be an operating control. So what they do is they are designed to sense the pressure at various points in the refrigeration system, and they do something based on that pressure. Again, they can be either pressure operating controls or safety controls. Safety controls are designed to stop our operation in an unsafe condition. The unsafe condition could be a high pressure condition, a blockage in a line set, or even voltage spikes. Operating controls are designed to be a part of the normal operation of a system. Operating controls turns things on and off based on normal operating conditions. An example of an operating control may be a thermostat or a low ambient control. Control operating pressures are within design conditions. Internal contacts change positions when the pressure changes. We have two main types of pressure switches that we're concerned about. First, we have a low pressure switch. It's used primarily for safety and as a thermostat. The second one is a high pressure. It's used as a safety control, but we also use it for condenser fan cycling. In other words, we want to cycle that condenser fan in some conditions based on pressure. So first, let's talk about the low pressure control. For safety operation, if the pressure drops too low, Okay, we could have a lack of refrigerant charge. It can mean no gas is returning to cool the compressor because remember, what cools a compressor? The refrigerant. It could also mean that there's a possible freezing condition in the evaporator and it can indicate a lack of cooling. So all of these things have a safety conditions. The low pressure control will open on a pressure drop and will close on a rise in pressure. For temperature operation, the pressure of the suction line indicates the temperature of the evaporator. The evaporator temperature indicates the box temperature. So if we know the pressure at a certain temperature, we could set a pressure control to be the controlling factor or the controlling device of a refrigeration system. For defrost operation, if properly set, the pressure control could initiate a defrost because again, it could sense the temperature of that evaporator and it knows if there's ice building up because the pressures are going to fall on the low side of the system. This is an example in R12 system, which R12 isn't in existence anymore, with a 34 degree box temperature and the compressor's not running, has an evaporator temperature of 34 degrees and a pressure in the suction line of 31.7. Okay, if we know all of that, we can set the pressure control to cycle the system on and off at the box temperature of 34 degrees. If we're trying to maintain a 34 degree box, the temperature should fluctuate with 34 degrees as the average. So the temperature would be between 36 and 32. We could set the low pressure cut in pressure, that's the point where the pressure control says, okay, it's time to turn on, to correspond with 36 degrees, okay, which would be 33.4 PSIG with R12. And we could have the cut out, that's the point where the pressure control turns everything off, to correspond with the evaporator temperature when the box is at 32 degrees. To know the exact temperature difference between the box and the evaporator, the temperature of the evaporator should be measured when the box is at 34 degrees and the system is running. Use a standard of 15 degrees between the evaporator cutout and the box. In this example, the cutout would have a would correspond to a 17 degree evaporator or approximately 19 psi. So if you don't know the exact temperature difference between the box and the evaporator, it is safe to use 15 degrees. Okay, a high pressure control can be used for fan cycling and safety controls. Okay, some high pressure controls can be set to close on a rise in pressure. The contacts can be wired in series with the condenser fan motor to turn the fan on and off depending on condens condenser pressures. We use this where systems will run in the low ambient or cold conditions, specifically like in the northeast in winter months. If the condenser is outside the 
let's say, the back of a restaurant. If the condenser is outside, we need to cycle that condenser fan on and off to maintain our pressures in the system. High pressure controls are also safety devices. Okay, excessive head pressure or high pressure in the system will cause the overheating of the compressor. The high pressure control will open a design pressure and turn off the condenser. Many controls are manual reset, meaning the reset button will open and need to be a physically reset. So the difference between a high pressure control that we use with the fan cycling and the high pressure control that we use for safety is basically the fan cycling does not have a manual reset. The safety does. We want to know if the high pressure control pops, we want a service tech to be aware of it. We want someone to have to go look at the condenser. A dual pressure control will open on either a low or high pressure. It's sometimes combined with a dual acting control, which will open on a close on rise or fall. Now the dual pressure controls, again, the low pressure side most often are automatic reset. The high pressure side does most often require a manual reset. You'll see a re little reset button at the top next to the pressure control. So again, just to recap, we have two different types of pres pressure controls and they all have two different purposes. First of all, we have the low pressure control. The low pressure control is both an operating control, if we want it to be take the place of a thermostat, and it's also a safety to make sure we still have refrigerant in the system. The high pressure control is a safety device first and foremost. It will open and require manual reset if the pressure in the system goes too high. The second purpose, and it's used mainly in the northeast part of the country or in colder climates, it's going to be a fan cycling control where we cycle the, press, the condenser fan motor on and off in order to maintain the pressures in the systems.